Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. My name is Connor, and in this video, we're going to be revisiting the problem that I solved in the most recent video that I posted, which was entitled One Problem, 16 Programming Languages. And I have received close to, I think, 100 comments at this point, and a lot of them were improvements on the solutions that I showed in that video, which I wanted to highlight in a follow up video. So that's what we're going to do here. Plus, we're going to look at one new solution that was provided by a user in the comments that was in the NIM language. So very quickly, let's review the video. I will leave a link in the description. Plus there'll be a little card in the right hand corner if you wanna click and go back to the original video that covered all 16 programming languages. The problem is find the GCD of an array and very simply, we're gonna be given a list of numbers and we need to find the greatest common divisor of the minimum and the maximum value that exists in that list. So the three examples that leak code gives us are the following 256910 75683 and 33 if we take the min and max of each of those three lists we get the following and if we take the gcd of those two numbers for each of the examples we end up with two one and three as i mentioned we went through that very quickly but if you'd like the full in-depth uh, slower description of that problem check out the original video so first we're going to hop into the julia language so this was the original solution that we showed uh, pretty nice. I think it ranked in the top half of the languages that we covered. We have GCD and then we're passing it to the result of min nums with the splat operator as I have learned that it's called and max nums with the splat operator. So a bunch of users pointed out a whole bunch of things. So we're not going to go through this in detail, but basically Michael has pointed out that we don't actually need to use the full blown function definition. We can use the more compact assignment uh, version. And we also can make use of the two minimum and maximum functions instead of using the spot operator if we want. Um, so Joao on Twitter pointed out the same thing. Uh, Bogdan also pointed out that we can use the minimum and maximum functions. And so did Felipe. And then we had two more comments. Uh, one from, I'm going to mispronounce this, I apologize, Maciej, um, that pointed out that Julia actually has a min-max function and it's called Extrema. And then Brad also points out that Raku has a min-max function as well, which I missed. So we're going to look at Raku in a second. And then on top of that, uh, this user also pointed out that Extrema um, is a function that exists in Julia. So if we revisit our Julia solution, once again, we have the assignment form that we can switch to here. So I actually prefer this much more than what I had before. And as a couple uh, users pointed out, you can use the minimum and maximum function and avoid the splat operator. It's technically two characters more, but this might be more readable or more intuitive for some. Uh, but I think more beautifully is using the extrema function with the splat operator. Uh, I think this is really, really nice, really, really compact. And on top of this, I could not find who DM'd me this or whether it was on Twitter or YouTube comment or somewhere on Discord. Someone sent me the point free version, which like I said, I can't find. I apologize to the person who pointed this out, but thank you so much. You can uh, make this a point free solution in Julia by using the composition operator, uh, which you get by going slash circ s or c i r c um, in the Julia terminal or whatever IDE that you're using if it supports sort of the backslash completion. And we need to compose it with collect because extrema returns a tuple and GCD only works on lists. So the collect function in the middle there is gonna change your tuple into a list. And in my opinion, this is the most beautiful solution of all. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I really, really like point free uh, solutions um, because I just think they're the most uh, succinct and they communicate to the reader exactly what you wanna do here. Um, so. Thank you to everyone that commented with the better Julia solutions. Uh, I'll continue to try and improve my Julia for future videos. Moving on to the next language that we're going to revisit is, I believe, Raku. So we'll go through this one really quickly. There was a bunch of comments um, from folks that knew Raku, but uh, I'm only going to highlight one of them. That's basically pointing out that there is a min-max function that can be used here. So uh, the syntax is slightly different, but basically... Uh, we take the GCD, put it in brackets, and then we go nums.minmax.bounds. And uh, I do prefer this. Anytime you can use an algorithm that's going to do a single pass instead of two passes uh, because you're doing two different explicit calls to algorithms that are linear, I think that's much preferable. So yeah, once again, thank you um, for posting this improvement. Moving on to the third language that we're going to look at, Ruby. We got a couple folks that pointed out that you can omit the return similar to uh, languages like Rust. 
And I think actually potentially Rust borrowed this from Ruby. Um, so uh, this, so yeah, Ilya pointed that out. Then John pointed out the same thing. And uh, thank you so much. I don't know how to pronounce this. Luge eight n uh, pointed out that Ruby actually has a min max method, and I'm not sure how I missed this because I should have checked because Ruby has a plethora of functions um, and it leads to the most beautiful version of this solution in my opinion. So once again, we can omit the return here, uh, but more importantly, we can substitute the two explicit calls to dot max and dot min and end up with this nums dot min max. And then because you end up uh, with the two values, you need to do a reduction and then you can pass it the colon GCD and you're good to go. So uh, a big improvement in my opinion compared to the sort of asymmetric as one of the commenters pointed out, I think it was Rodrigo pointed out that they didn't really like the initial Ruby solution because it was asymmetric and you couldn't read linearly, but now you can read just left to right and you're good to go. Moving on to our fourth and final language that we're going to revisit, I believe is Fortran. So this ranked at the very bottom of all 16 languages that I covered last time, but I pointed out this is the first Fortran code that I've ever written. And the response that I got from the Fortran community was uh, so amazing. So thank you to everyone in the comments and on Twitter. Um, a lot of folks that aren't Fortran developers were sort of <laughs> casting shade on the language, um, but the Fortran folks took the time to point out all the li little things that I could have improved on. Um, the Fortran uh, language Twitter account even uh, retweeted my initial video tweet saying that, you know, they're going to work on improving their tutorials in the future, but just thanks for covering it, which I thought was awesome. And then uh, Milan uh, posted a bunch of improvements. So let's walk through them, but uh, just thank you to all the Fortran folks. Um, it's a model of how a community, I think, should act if they're trying to get people to um, be more excited about their language. Um, so yeah, let's revisit my initial solution. So the first thing that we can do is we can omit the sort of result res at the, at the end of our uh, function signature and omit the temporary res variable and replace this with find GCD equals what we're going to return. Um, so that cleans things up quite a bit. Uh, the second thing that we can improve on is that we don't actually need to pass the num size. There's a new syntax where basically if you um, replace the num size in our nums here with a colon, we can omit that and it'll just infer the length of our array nums. So if we do that, we can get rid of num size, uh, an extra line, and we're now just down to three lines in our implementation. And on top of that, it was pointed out that the implicit none is typically uh, included at the top of a module. So you're not going to have to include this in the function. So we can omit that as well, as long as we include it at the module level. So we went from what we had before down to just basically uh, two lines in the body of our function, if you exclude the function signature and the end function find GCD. Um, so this I, I thought was absolutely awesome. Still doesn't rank in the top, you know, eight languages because you have to implement the GCD function on your own. Uh, but speaking to that, uh, Milan, the same person that um, tweeted out the improvements on Twitter, uh, posted on the GitHub issue that I mentioned in the video saying that, you know, we should work on getting this in because 15 of the or 14 of the 16 languages that I covered in my original video all have GCD in the standard library. Um, so just super awesome, as I mentioned before, the response that I got from the Fortran uh, community. And um, because of that, yeah, I will try to include more modern Fortran and improve my uh, Fortran foo so that uh, my future solutions aren't uh, so suboptimal. And last but not least, we are going to look at a new solution very briefly. So a user by the name of Mohan posted a solution in NIM. And if we take a look at that, uh, it's pretty nice and similar to a few of the solutions that we saw in Elixir and sort of the original Julia solution. So they have a built-in GCD function, and then you just pass to it nums.min and nums.max. So thanks to Mohan for posting this uh, solution in a 17th language. So... At this point, we have to update our summary table that we looked at at the end of the original video. So we basically just need to update uh, Ruby, Raku, and Julia because they all have either a min-max function or a min-max function under a different name, aka Julia, which calls it Extrema. And uh, we can quickly revisit my rankings. I'm not going to completely rearrange them, but the one thing I would say is due to the fact that Julia has a point-free solution and a built-in sort of min-max function under the name of Extrema, I would definitely shift this up to number four. And the last thing I'll mention, as I did at the end of my last video, was that if you're interested in this kind of content, be sure to check out either one of my two podcasts. The first one, ADSP, the podcast, which stands for Algorithms Plus Data Structures Equals Programs, or my second podcast, ArrayCast, which focuses on array languages like APL, JK, and Q. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone that responded in the comments last time. 
And I hope you learned something from this video as I definitely did from the comments. Hope you have a great day.